I, I, you know, I, I, I keep watching the slow motion horror just creeping forward. Meantime, down in the Winter Palace at Mar-a-Lago, Trump in his fucking tuxedo and his face paint and, and all of his billionaire cronies are sitting around laughing their fucking asses off at us poor little uh, proles out here. The proletariat. You know, uh, what are we doing? Uh, we're talking about, well, you can't interfere with education. Oh, yes, we can. You can't interfere with the military. Oh, yes, we can. We got you, you fucking liberals and progressives and bitches and bastards and Jews and immigrants and Muslims. Uh, we got you. We got you. Finally, we got you. And what are we doing we're letting this happen. Now, it's what I'm suggesting a good idea. Um, I don't know, but it's an extreme idea. But are we not in an extreme situation? Look what the son of a bitch is doing. Look what he's doing. Look what he's doing. Look what he's doing. And the part that really is amazing to me, that the people are going to be hurt the most are the people who voted for him. They provided Trump with the fucking rope to hang themselves. Well, they have their Christian bullshit religion to fall back on. Well, yeah, times are tough, but I'm going to go to heaven. Ah. An example of the shock that is roiling through certain levels of consciousness, I guess I would put it, in this country. Here's an example. <clears throat> Laura Helmuth. She has been the editor-in-chief of the magazine Scientific American for a number of years. She has resigned following her expletive-filled rant about the people who voted for Donald Trump. In other words, here's a woman who, like your humble and obedient servant here, me, with the expletive-filled rants I get into about Donald Trump voters, but I am not the editor-in-chief of Scientific American. Nobody can fucking touch me unless they decide to use a bullet or to somehow get to uh, the various online... Uh, Carriers of my podcast. But Ms. Helmuth posted on Blue Sky. That's, an, uh, that's a rival to X. Uh, millions of people. Well, okay, don't exaggerate. Tens of thousands of people are leaving X. I deleted that fucking app out of my phone the other day. But Blue Sky is, is a rival. And she posted there yesterday that she's, quote, decided to leave Scientific American after an exciting four and a half years as editor-in-chief, end quote. Now, she didn't mention her previous comments. But in a series of posts that have now been deleted from Blue Sky, she called Trump voters, quote, the meanest, dumbest, most bigoted group and fascists. Meanest, dumbest, bigoted fascists. That was following the Orange Bastards re-election last week. So obviously comments like that went viral on X and were criticized by this increasingly neo-Nazi uh, platform, X. X. X, you know, when it was Twitter, wasn't, it nice, wasn't that a nice place, Twitter? Huh? All kinds of stuff. Now it's become a tool of this jumping jack na Nazi fucking immigrant from South Africa, Elon Musk, who is going to be the shadow president, I guess. Ms. Helmuth wrote, quote, her, her comment, I'm not quoting, she had apologized in a separate post on Blue Sky, and she called what she said, quote, offensive and inappropriate, and that they, quote, don't reflect the position, end quote, of Scientific American. Well, I, I, I didn't think they did. I thought they were her. The, the screaming and ranting I do doesn't reflect the position of uh, Progressive Voices Radio or iTunes or anyone else who carries this uh, podcast. They're mine. 
So Helmuth wrote this, quote, I respect and value people across the political spectrum. These posts, which I have deleted, do not reflect my beliefs. They were a mistake, a mistaken expression of shock and confusion about the election results. Well, that's one thing you will fucking never hear from me. I will never post or retract the comments and the criticisms and the disgust that I have shown over Trump or, or, or his inner circle of fucking Nazis. Kimberly Lau, who is the president of Scientific American, issued a statement saying that it was Ms. Helmuth's decision to leave and a search for her replacement is underway. Mm -hmm. And then the usual statement, and, and I hate this shit, but let me share it with you. This is what the uh, president of Scientific American wrote, quote, We thank Laura for her four years leading Scientific American, during which time the magazine won major science communications awards and saw the establishment of of a reimagined digital newsroom. We wish her well for the future, end quote. Now, if you're not familiar with Scientific American, and I am ever since somebody got me a, a, a subscription a long time ago, it's been, it's been in print for 180 fucking years. The longest lived magazine in print in the country, Scientific American. It has published pieces from more than 200 Nobel Prize winners. And this year, and this was only the second time in its history, Scientific uh, American published a presidential endorsement for Kamala Harris. And the endorsement said Trump, quote, endangers public health and safety and rejects evidence preferring instead nonsensical conspiracy fantasies, end quote. Now, that's not the comments that caused Ms. Helmuth to resign. It was her personal comments about the people that voted for this fucking bastard. And as you know, if you are a regular listener to this little podcast, I about lost my shit last Wednesday after the election results were made, and it turned out that approximately 10, 12 million people who voted for Biden did not vote for Kamala Harris, and they didn't vote for Trump either. They showed their asses by withholding their vote. And you know, you know what my thoughts were about that, and they were same as Ms. Helmuth's, you stupid fucking idiots. And now we have to live with it. So my idea about President Biden, he has 60 some days left. And I, 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 I can't I can't accept the idea. It was hard for me to accept the idea and witness via television Joe Biden inviting the slimy fucking Nazi into the White House for a sit down with this orange bastard. And then Biden telling the orange bastard, oh, well, yeah, we're going to make sure we have a peaceful transition. What did Trump do when Biden won? I mean, give me a fucking break. How, why is it that liberals progressives, whatever you want, lefties feel like they have to lay down and let these fucking Nazis walk all over them. What, what is this shit? Didn't we learn anything from Germany 1933? I mean, didn't we? And if we didn't, shame on us. What the fuck? 80 million people died in World War II because the people in Germany said, oh, Adolf Hitler, you know, he's... Uh, He's going to save us from this uh, depression that we're in. He's going to restore our greatness. And Germany was a great country. Are you kidding me? The center of civilization in so many areas. 
music and art and science and philosophy, Germany, until Hitler took over. And then millions of people in that country had to fucking die. Cities had to be turned into rubble. People had to be burned alive. Bombs had to fall. Because of Hitler. Because of one fucking useless... Supposing somebody would have offed Hitler. I mean, there were six suicides attempt, uh, suicides, six assassination attempts on Hitler. We know about the one where the generals were the plot when they had a meeting, yada, 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 and the bomb went off under the table, and uh, one person, I think, was killed. A couple of people were wounded, but their Führer walked free. So the people of Germany, after the fact, at least the military leaders, made a decision that they had to get rid of this son of a bitch. It was too late. Way too late. This is after five, six million Jews had been burned alive. Babies, children, men, women, burned. This is when almost every fucking country in Eastern Europe had been invaded and people butchered by the hundreds and thousands, hanged en masse, shot by firing squads to satisfy Adolf Hitler. Now, if you're listening to this, you're thinking, Jesus Christ, Malloy, Trump is not Hitler. Are you fucking kidding me? You don't think so. You don't think so. Was Hitler Hitler when he was appointed chancellor? No. He was the leader of the National Socialist Germany Party. And then what happened? Well, what happened was his inner cadre of freaks and murderers and potential killers and, and violent son of a bitches go right down the list. Gehring and Himmler. And, and I, I mean, they took control. They took control of the entire country and the and the. Uh, comparatively speaking, the billionaires and the German industrialists, they went right along with it. Yeah, okay, we will fund or we will fuel what is needed by the Reich to take over the world. Just give us those fucking Jews for save, slave labor. Give us those goddamn Polacks for slave labor. Give us those goddamn WAPs out of Italy. Give us all these fucking subhuman people. And we will put them to work in the factories and we will make the Reich thrive. Make Germany great again. So, is it bullshit, gratuitous comparison? Trump, Hitler? <laughs> well, since there is no institution in this country right now who is willing to stand forward and demand that we put an end to this before it stops, then the answer is, is Trump, Hitler? Uh, Trump could probably make Hitler look like a fucking piker. They're both insane. But Trump is insane as he takes office this time. Hitler, I think, went insane. So what to do, what to do, what to do, what to do? How do we stop the murder of our own country, if we are not willing, if the leadership, the military, the uh, uh, business community, the military community, the religious community, the political community, the judicial community, community, the legal community, nobody, there is not one fucking organization that as a group has stood up and said, this shit must stop now. Hi, True Seekers. Mike Malloy here. You know, the Progressive Voices Network brings you commercial-free commentary from today's leading progressive radio hosts and pundits, like me, Mike Malloy, 24 hours a day. I'm not your typical old guy from the 80s or the 90s talk radio host, and Progressive Voices is not your typical talk radio network. It's a listener-supported nonprofit with no corporate control whatsoever over our broadcast. So hosts like me, Mike Malloy 
can, are free to rant and scream and carry on about whatever we like. We're often controversial, but we're never boring. Weeknights, 9 p.m. in the East, 6 p.m. in the West, on the Progressive Voices Network. Always progressive, always on. I'm Mike Malloy. Keep it lit.